I was out and about, lost in the dark. I was out and about, lost in the dark. I was out and about, lost in the dark. I was out and about, lost in the dark. Anxiously pacing alone in the park. Anxiously pacing alone in the park. Plagued by a memory vaguely in sight. Plagued by a memory vaguely in sight. Plagued by a memory vaguely in sight. Mary, so Mary, got married that night. Mary, so Mary, got married that night. They watched as he stood so proud by her side. They watched as he stood so proud by her side. They watched as he stood so proud by her side. Father fed them their lines, then he kissed his bride. Father fed them their lines, then he kissed his bride. Father fed them their lines, then he kissed his bride. Standing and beaming, they shouted their cheers. Standing and beaming, they shouted their cheers. Standing and beaming, they shouted their cheers. While I sat in the back, covering tears. While I sat in the back, covering tears. Pasta, lasagna, ham, tacos, and bread. Pasta, lasagna, ham, tacos, and bread. Pasta, lasagna, ham, tacos, and bread. The cooks were all thanked. They danced, but she led. The cooks were all thanked. They danced, but she led. Now half in the bag, I begged and I prayed. Now half in the bag, I begged and I prayed. Now half in the bag, I begged and I prayed. Still this sad sack thought of nothing to say. Still this sad sack thought of nothing to say. I cursed at the stars and doubted my doubts. I cursed at the stars and doubted my doubts. I cursed at the stars and doubted my doubts. Sprang from my chair, but my legs were left out. Sprang from my chair, but my legs were left out. Foul language ensued. I choked on a tooth. Foul language ensued. I choked on a tooth. Foul language ensued. I choked on a tooth. While mercilessly mocked from the DJ booth. While mercilessly mocked from the DJ booth. They covered the car with streamers and cans. They covered the car with streamers and cans. Honking and clanking like a marching band. 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 I caught her eye, and I swore she mouthed white. I caught her eye, and I swore she mouthed white. I caught her eye, and I swore she mouthed white. A lead foot on the gas, and left to my fate. A lead foot on the gas, and left to my fate. Then I turned red, went mad as a hatter. Then I turned red, went mad as a hatter. Tore through my runners, sprinting to catch her. He hit the brakes, he was up to no good. He hit the brakes, he was up to no good. He hit the brakes, he was up to no good. I bent, then I snapped and flew over the hood. I bent, then I snapped and flew over the hood. I bent, then I snapped and flew over the hood. Mary, so Mary, got married today. 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 Love sick and spurned, I got carried away. Love sick and spurned, I got carried away. I swore it would be my finest hour. I swore it would be my finest hour. I swore it would be my finest hour. Now I lay in bed, broken and sour. Now I lay in bed, broken and sour. Now I lay in bed, broken and sour. The country really breaks down into five main regions. So we have BC, the Prairies, Ontario, Quebec, the Maritimes, and Newfoundland would be six. But the difference between BC and the prairies is probably at a secondary level. And that um, taxonomy, if you will, leaves out obviously half of the country, the northern half of the country. The population there um, consists well of, of two principal groups. One is people of indigenous background. And I mean, they're native speakers of, of English. And of course, many of them are speakers of standard English. But the English that they speak is, is distinctive because it um, often carries the remaining effects of some of those indigenous languages, even after, after they're not actively spoken. But there's also, of course, a non-Aboriginal, a non-Indigenous population in the north. But the thing is that they're too sparse and um, they come from too many different parts of southern Canada to have formed a, a cohesive dialect in the traditional sense. Okay, well, um, all of the regions of Canada um, have some things in common that make them all Canadian in, in a continental perspective. So make them all different from the kinds of English we hear, say, in Britain or even in, the United, in most of the United States. Um, although most of Canadian English is actually very similar to the kind of English we hear in the Western United States. Nevertheless, there are some features of Canadian English that unify all Canadians, like the fact that they don't make the difference between uh, lot and thought. Cut, 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 
cut. Cut, cut. But there are also things that divide them. So uh, Canadian raising, we said, was something that um, the difference between the vowels in words like how and cow and words like out and south, that is something we find across Canada. Um, though we said that Canadians are um, distinguished or differentiated in terms of the quality of the raised vowel between something like south and out in the west and something more like south and out in Ontario. Cow. House, sour, south. Cow, south, sour, house. Cow, house, sour, south. Cow, house, out, sour, south. Out, south, house. Out, south, house. We also have a difference uh, between um, the regions in terms of the R vowel, so the uh, vowel of words like start and car, which is much darker in the west than it is in the east. So in the west we get start and car, whereas in Ontario we get start and car, and in the east we get something like start and car. Um, so that's a, a really audible difference. Car. Start. Car. Start. Car. Start. Car. Start. Car. Start. Car. Car. Start. Start. Um, but we also get a difference in the uh, vowels before um, uh, R, so the uh, number of distinctions between vowels that occur before a double R, um, uh, with Quebec English being distinguished as the only variety that maintains some distinctions like uh, Mary versus Mary as being distinct, whereas that would be Mary and Mary elsewhere in Canada. Mary. 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 And also, uh, there's a little bit more of a distinction between words like borrow um, and sorry uh, ver versus, versus borrow, uh, borrow and sorry. Um, so the difference between sorry and sore um, is a little bit more common in Quebec than elsewhere. Sorry. 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 And then the other big difference involves the sound of the A vowels, or the short A vowel, when it occurs before nasals, uh, so before N and M, or before the G sound. So that's where we find uh, some regional differences in the details of how that vowel sounds in particular environments. So when it occurs before an N, we get a difference between cat and can, uh, which is very characteristic of Ontario English and Nova Scotia English, uh, but not of um, Quebec English and less so of Western English. Bat. Band. Bat. Band. Bat. Band. Bat. Band. And when it occurs before a G sound, as in um, bat and bag, um, the, the, that difference I'm making would be characteristic, characteristic of the western part of Canada, um, bat versus bag, um, but less so of the eastern part of Canada where you'd get bat and bag. Bat. Bag. Vague. Bat. Bag. Vague. So those are the main phonetic variables that allow us to identify uh, five or six different regions of Canada based on phonetic variation. There are some um, traditional enclaves of, um, that are more distinctive of Canadian English that go back to, again to original settlements that, um, that uh, had for a long time been isolated from influence from outside. So most of these occur in Eastern Canada uh, in the older settled, settled parts. Um, so they, and they mostly relate to the heavy British settlement, settlement from particular areas of Britain. Um, so Newfoundland is the, the, the uh, only the most obvious example of that. Oh Jesus, I, I had to really stand and think about this. If, I, you know, I always said mom as a kid, but I don't know, as I got older, I was calling mother. Clout, uh, smack upside the head. There's some crook about there, what's wrong with you? So Prince Edward Island is also a place that had, for instance, heavy Scottish settlement. Standing and beaming, they shouted their cheers, while I sat in the back, covering tears. Foul language ensued. I choked on a tooth while mercilessly mocked from the DJ booth. And we also saw a very heavy Scottish influence on Cape Breton um, and in parts of, uh, of mainland Nova Scotia, like Pictou County. 
uh, and the South Shore. Um, and New Brunswick uh, had uh, a lot of Irish settlement, uh, as did Quebec. Um, and uh, the Ottawa Valley between Ontario and Quebec was settled by a mix of Irish and Scottish settlers and um, had, again, until sort of the late 20th century, uh, a notably distinct kind of English that showed that influence. Um, but as we get west of Ontario, the enclaves become fewer and harder to identify. Many of them are, uh, occur with uh, religious communities that have self-segregated themselves. So, so, for instance, the Mennonites of southern Manitoba or the Mormons of southern Alberta, um, because of their self-segregation, they have preserved, um, to some extent, a distinct kind of English that represents um, the English of the immigrants. So in the case of the Mennonites, it would be the low German influenced English of the Mennonites. And in the Mormon case, they came from the United States. So they have some American English features that are preserved. But the two things that most Americans focus on as the stereotype are the use of the word A by Canadians. So when people say, you know, go down the street A eh, and turn left at the next lights A. Eh? Um, that uh, hits Americans as being something distinctive about Canadian English, even though recent research suggests that most Canadians don't actually talk that way. Uh, so it's, it'd be one of those cases where the stereotype is really not in line with, uh, with majority usage. But the other thing is the, is the Canadian raising, um, and uh, that unfortunately <clears throat> gets portrayed in the written media. Um, quite frequently, where uh, American journalists have to come up with a spelling that somehow conveys the difference in sound. It's actually the kind of difference in sound that can't be accurately conveyed with the resources of the English spelling system. Um, but they make their best effort by re-spelling out and about as oot and aboot, O-O-T and A-B-O-O-T. If they listen to Western Canadian English instead of Ontario English, um, the more accurate respelling would be something like oat and a boat, O-A-T and A-B-O-A-T, um, which actually does sound similar to how those words are pronounced on the, in, in Western Canada. But for Eastern Canada, it's spelling them O-O-T and A-B-O-O-T is certainly not accurate uh, because no one says a boot and oot in, in Canada. Um, uh, but it's the best that you can come up with, I guess, using the English spelling system. So when people, when Americans, if they don't have their own exposure to this directly, they read this in a newspaper article, and then they, to, they tend to reproduce it um, in speech as though it were an accurate portrayal, which of course it's not. The fact is that, again, the English spoken in most of the Western United States, which essentially is the kind of English we hear on most American media today, which shifted west from New York City to Los Angeles, and now it's uh, pretty distinctively located in Los Angeles for the uh, television and movie uh, worlds. Um, and uh, that kind of English is very similar to Canadian English. Um, and it's sometimes difficult to tell the difference. And as a result, for instance, many Canadian actors uh, can go down to Los Angeles and get jobs in the American media industry without really having to do much of an adjustment um, of their speech. Sociolinguists have traditionally believed that the major source of influence on someone's speech is the speech of their peer group. Um, so that for influence to spread from one person to another requires a fairly intensive degree of face-to-face -face interaction, which is why we tend to speak like the people we speak most to. Um, most of us speak the way our elementary school class spoke, um, and that uh, tends to be the major influence on the kind of English we speak. Even if we watch, say, a lot of British television growing up in Canada, we're not going to end up speaking British English um, because uh, that's a passive one-way interaction. We're receiving um, language but not giving it back, and there's something about that one-way passivity that prevents any significant diffusion of linguistic features beyond perhaps a few vocabulary items and so on. In terms of mainland Canada, there isn't a great deal of research that has looked at specifically that question of whether regional differences are getting greater or lesser over time. Um, let's face it, the differences in Canadian English from between Victoria and Halifax are pretty subtle to begin with, uh, particularly among the speech of you know fairly well-educated, middle-class, urban, uh, younger people. Um, we do have a pretty homogeneous kind of English at that level, so it's uh, perhaps um, less obvious 
a question for Canadians um, than it would be for um, Americans, for instance, where they have very distinctive patterns associated with New York City, with Boston, with the South, um, and those patterns have been well studied, and all the research in the United States suggests that um, the regional patterns of American English are getting weaker in the speech of young urban um, populations. Um, and certainly that's true in Britain and in Europe as well. So most of the research around the world suggests a gradual convergence of speech with regional or national standard varieties. And whether that's happening in Canada is, is, you know, has not been studied to the same extent, um, but likely is happening here as well. The cottage. Camp. Oh, a cabin. Uh, either a lake or a cabin. Summer house. Sneakers. Kicks. Runners. Running shoes. Notebook. Cahier. Practice book. An exercise book. Parking garage. A parkade. I'll say corner store. Convenience store. Depaner in Quebec. Backpack. A school bag. Pack sack. A knapsack. A kit bag. Book bag. I'd call the spot where you pay for stuff at a store the till. Cashier. The cash register. The cash. Check out. Pop. Pop. Pop or soda. A soft drink. Pop. Coke. Or we call it drink. We went to the you went to the store to get a bottle of drink, a bag of chips, 